I'm not really sure what's going on in here, to be quite honest. Um, Hey folks, RavenDCMerica.com here. Today I've got New Balance's Run IQ GPS watch. Uh, now this watch is notable because it is Android wear and also has music built into it as well as an optical heart rate monitor and of course the GPS aspect itself. Uh, and further, it's built itself as being kind of the first Strava integrated GPS watch. So what I'm gonna do is a bit of an unboxing and size comparison between this watch and some other watches in that same sort of category and kind of talk about the basics briefly. Uh, there'll be plenty more videos where I get into actually running with outside and some of the details there. This is really just the unboxing. So here we got this massive shoebox thing. You can hear it. Something's in there. Um, this isn't the normal box. This is the box they typically send to, I guess, media or demos or something. Uh, it's somewhat common for tech companies to do that where they'll send like this big, super fancy ass thing uh, to tech reviewers as opposed to just sending the, the watch itself. Not quite sure why, but nonetheless, I'll figure I'll show you the whole thing since they sent it to me just to, to show you. Um, note that like usual, I do send all these products back afterwards. So uh, with that, let's begin. So here we have the outer shell. Um, now I've shaken up the contents so it doesn't quite look super pretty anymore. If I shake them back into the slot, good to go. Um, so let me kind of wrap it around here and show you what's going on. So here we are with the box itself. Uh, it's pretty fancy. It's obviously a shoe box on the outside with something clanking around on the inside. We've got the Run IQ watch right there behind this uh, sketch of Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, and then of course we've got this Intel inside. This is because Intel has partnered with New Balance on this, or New Balance partnered with Intel, however you want to look at it. Uh, they partnered together and this is sort of the partnership there uh, and the result of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this plastic uh, thingy right here. So the map of Boston, uh, toss that off the side. That was really loud, sorry. Um, and then we got the watch right here. I'm gonna put that aside for a second because I actually have no idea what's in this box. Um, so we've got the rest of it looks like uh, San Francisco, California, this plastic sheet here. And then we got some stickery thing inside here. So this, uh, it says what it says right there. You can pause it and read it. Uh, next, I've got, I'm not really sure what's going on in here to be quite honest. Um, I've got this plastic thing, more plastic thing. This is really unusual. I've got these doohickeys, and then I've got this, this stuff, batteries, and another doohickeys. Uh, these look like lights and batteries, and something looks like it's a bit rough. Um, let me, hold on one second, let me just see if I can put this back together again. So I think one of the batteries had a bad day. I'm gonna swap it. Hang on. This battery looks sketchy. I found a new battery. Okay, it's on. Sort of. So, uh, yeah? I don't know what else to do here. I'll put the lights back on the, the box, I guess. Put that there, and I put this here, and then I press the button and the battery, the light's already dead. Oh, I don't know. It's not good at all. I don't know what this will be about. So, let's talk about the watch, because that's what this video is about, and that's all that really matters here. So, here we go, the box itself. We have the Run IQ smartwatch. Uh, so again, their Android Wear watch right there. Uh, on the back here, we've got some uh, basically features there, so we can see Sync with Strava, um, bring around music, which means that it has music capabilities to play wirelessly to Bluetooth smart headphones. We've then got uh, location mapping out of the workout with GPS. It's got the optical heart rate sensor, it's got smart notifications, and then it's got the ability to keep your pace, uh, which is good. That's sort of the point of a running watch. Um, so next, I gotta find a way to open this up. So give me two seconds. Today's weapon of choice is a flatbed screwdriver. Flathead, not flatbed. There we go. Nothing about being pretty there. And inside, the little coffin, we have the watch. So. Here we go inside, uh, a bunch of marketing stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up. So we have, uh, looks like a manual and then some safety crap. Um, and then we've got the charging pad dock thing. We've got the watch itself. Uh, that was some blue thing. And then we have, it looks like a micro USB cable. 
there's nothing else inside here. So that is that is that. Put that off the side. I don't know, something like that might look pretty. So, as I said before, not a whole lot in here, really. We've got, uh, this is the micro USB cable to the charging dock, so that goes in and put that right there. And then we've got the watch itself. Um, now the watch is interesting, it actually has these uh, quick release bands there, so you can see you can just pop that in, pop it out like that. Um, I don't have any other bands in a box, so I'm guessing this, maybe they sell other bands or something like that, but I'll go ahead and put this back in place so it looks correct. There we go. We can see the optical heart rate sensor on the back right there. Uh, I'm not clear on who makes the optical heart rate sensor, but uh, it is there at least. So, and that just simply has a dock like that and it can you know, lay flat, no problems there. Uh, and I could charge it that way. We have this manual getting started. Uh, it says to power on, that way you can see it. To power on, I'm gonna press this side button right here. There we go, it is powering on. So a couple things to note really quick while it's doing that. The watch is waterproof to 50 meters, uh, which is pretty solid. It's a little bit better than Polar's M600 Android Wear watch, which is only waterproof to probably five meters. Um, but again, in most cases, it doesn't really matter too much. It is suitable and allowable for swimming. That's something that New Balance does call up specifically, that you can go ahead and use this for swimming. It doesn't actually track that, but at least you can use it without killing it. It does have, of course, the internal storage there. It has four gigs of storage, though only a portion of that is usable. Next, as you're probably noticing, the resolution is pretty darn clear. Um, this has a 400 by 400 resolution AMOLED display. Uh, Polar's M600 is around 240 by 240, so not quite as big, um, but they both are pretty clear, quite frankly. So at this point, this is the standard Android Wear basically starting screen. So, um, you know, it is an Android Wear watch first and somewhat of a New Balance watch second. That's something to really understand that's important about Android Wear devices is that really New Balance is sitting atop the Android Wear platform as effectively an app. And so there's customizations that different companies can do to try to make it their own. Um, of course, some of that is hardware, as you see here, for example, has dedicated buttons, another thing that the M600 does not have. Um, so they use these buttons, for example, for doing laps and splits, uh, super, super helpful for runners. And that's really one of the biggest complaints if you compare it to something like the Apple Watch, it doesn't really have those dedicated lap buttons. They have buttons on the Apple Watch, but those are used uh, within the entire operating system and not really for individual applications. Um, so uh, we can go ahead and swipe to begin here. I'll choose English, the language there. There we go. Uh, I agree to the policy. And now it's gonna go ahead and connect it to power source because I guess we're gonna do that right away uh, to get things started. Um, okay, my laptop was the nearest thing to me to give me a power source. Uh, at this point I plugged it in and it says you're ready. So now I can go ahead and swipe back the other way. Uh, I've got a sharper pair on my phone and so on. Uh, now that gets really more into some of the details that we'll talk about later on. First, First, what I want to do is kind of compare sizes. So we got the manual, let's toss this out of the way. It's not super useful. Uh, neither is the guide that tells you not to kill yourself. And we have a scale. So I want to talk size and comparisons and all that jazz. Um, so I'm gonna go and make sure it's teared. There we go, and apparently off in that case. So right now we've got the uh, Run IQ watch. I'm gonna toss it on there. That's coming in at about 75 grams. Next, we have the TomTom Tom Spark. That's coming in at about 47 grams. I bring this one up because this does have music storage on it. Uh, it has GPS, it has an optical heart rate sensor, it has a lot of the same features as this watch, except without the display, um, the brilliance of the display. It doesn't have Wi-Fi either, uh, but it's got kind of the same sport core functionality, uh, especially being that music piece there. Uh, it does have a lot longer battery life, but again, it does not have the apps uh, and functionality of Android Wear or any other app-based platform. So there's that. Uh, we then have the M600. That's coming at 63 grams, so about 12 grams less than the uh, Run IQ watch. This is really the closest competitor right now in the sports world to the Run IQ. Um, this came out, uh, I don't know, six months or so ago, and it just got Android Wear 2.0 this afternoon, like six minutes ago type this afternoon. Um, so that's gonna be pretty darn competitive to this. As I mentioned earlier, there's some minor differences. The most important one though is a lack of buttons on the side here whereas this does have those buttons. Uh, on the Polar Watch, you have a button here that you can use as well as a button on the side, but there isn't a dedicated lap button. And for most runners, that's a really big thing. Next, we've got two different Apple Watches just for fun. I've got the generic Apple Watch, the Sport. This is the uh, Series 2, just to be clear here, at 51 grams. And then the Nike, which should be virtually the same, minus the differences in the strap at uh, 62 grams. So that strap is certainly dumping a bit more weight on that. Um, but otherwise, these are both Series 2 watches. Uh, so they're all kind of in the same ballpark, um, with the exception of the TomTom, -tom, which is a lot lighter, because it doesn't have that brilliant display. You know, if you look at something like uh, this right there, let me get this 
Let's see this one here. Sorry, I got the right one. Uh, you can see the display is super clear, uh, just like this is super clear as well. There are different brightness levels right now, but I wouldn't really fret about that too much. You can see as they are, they're, they're pretty sharp, and that's much sharper than a typical Garmin. On the downside, though, these watches just don't last that long battery life. You're looking at, you know, 36 hours here, 48 hours if you're really damn lucky. Um, you're looking about the same right here. Uh, and so you got to kind of balance between having a lot of apps and functionality versus a longer battery life. Okay. With that out of the way, let's try to get this thing paired up just for the fun of it here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll start by pairing our phone. So we'll swipe right. i got to download the Android Wear app, which I already have. More importantly, i got to find my phone. Okay, phone found. And I'll go ahead and unlock this and crack open the Android Wear app here. At this point, I've got my M600 that's over there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and now pair it to this one. So I'm going to go search or add for a new device up here. So pair a new wearable. And then I've got a watch. Yep, I do. Go into it and it's gonna go ahead and uh, look for the watch here. On your watch, swipe the code below. There we go. Now you can see NB run IQ and then a code. So I'm gonna hit that there. Maybe. There we go. Now it's connecting. And it's gonna go ahead and kind of connect on the standard Android Wear and iOS. Uh, now keep in mind, Android Wear, you know, pre 2.0 on iOS is generally a sucky experience. Um, whereas on 2.0, uh, which again, just in the last 24 hours here, is a much better experience. And so uh, that's something I'll dive into in more depth in future posts, or sorry, future videos, um, but uh, stay tuned for that piece there. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this finish up and we'll circle back here as soon as it's done. Okay, now that I've got everything all set up, I'm gonna give you a bit of a walkthrough of the watch itself. Um, so what I've got here is the watch all paired up to my iPhone. Uh, keep in mind the iPhone can only have one Android Wear device paired to at a time. So as soon as I paired this one, it popped out the Polar M600. Um, also keep in mind, every time you repair this Android Wear watch, it basically resets the whole thing. So it's kind of like starting from scratch again. Uh, so in this case, I go and tap the screen, you get additional information, um, some additional icons, in fact, that New Balance has. So this left-hand icon here is my heart rate. Uh, when I go ahead and flip it over on the back, you will see it's going to enable the optical heart rate sensor right there, that green light. Uh, that would normally be my wrist, but I can put my finger over it and still get an optical reading. Uh, it takes generally between 10 and 15 seconds. Uh, and what I've seen is most of the time, uh, new balance on this optical heart rate sensor will go ahead and read high initially, uh, and then it'll kind of lock in. So it's going to so zero, 80 is what I typically see, and then it'll go ahead and settle on out. Uh, that settling period does take a bit of time. So, uh, you know, between 30 and 60 seconds from what I'm seeing right now. Um, keep in mind also that New Balance, this watch does not have any sort of 24 by 7 heart rate mode. So there's no all day recording like you'd see on a Fitbit or an Apple Watch or a Garmin or basically everyone else out there. Um, so I'm going to swipe out here. In the middle icon bottom, it, in the bottom middle icon right there, I've got uh, the run icon. I'm going to come back to that in a second. And then on the right hand side, I've got my steps for the day. Uh, so I can see just the 30 steps. That's literally, that's it. So I just swipe too much there, but 30 steps, that's all I get. I don't get, um, for example, calories or distance walked or anything else that you typically see, even like on a 40 or $50 activity tracker, which is kind of a bummer. Um, you can still access that though through the Google Fit app. So if I swipe to the right here and go down, uh, you'll see the Google Fit app there. Uh, this, by the way, that was the app dashboard where your, all your apps would live. Uh, so whether it be Strava or weather apps or uh, anything there is an app, it's gonna be in that area. And you can see here in the Fit app, I can get more information on my steps as well as go ahead and record a heart rate um, there as well. So swiping back to here, uh, back to the home screen, I can go ahead and down to this run icon and this will launch the running app. So at this point I can go and change the settings. Uh, on the left-hand side, I've really got some very, very basic settings. I've got like two settings to be precise. I can go from run to ride and ride to run and run to ride and ride to run and that's it. Um, I can change either the run auto pause or the ride auto pause and I can change the uh, metric or imperial. So I guess technically three settings. I don't really count this as a separate setting since it's the same thing as this. It's just run or ride. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna swipe back here uh, and I'm downstairs underground, so it's not gonna find GPS, which is fine. I'm gonna go and click start though to start the activity. And there we go. Now each of these bars at the top there are different pages. So this first page, if I, oh man. So this is part of the problem with this watch. If I swipe too far, then I'm basically out of the app and it's kind of a pain in the ass to get back in again. Um, there we go. So it's one of those things where if you're running along, you swipe too far, you gotta find that little button again. I, I wish it would just stay put. Um, so in any case, swiping to the right and then back again so you can see, this is the Run IQ page. Uh, it's got my time, it's got my distance, and it's got the pace down the bottom. I swipe again, I've got my heart rate. Um, in this case, it's showing my heart rate at 64 beats per minute. And I've got the zones down at the bottom. You can see those different chunks there for the different zones. 
I can swipe again into Cadence. I'm not going anywhere, so you won't see any Cadence at the moment. And then finally, I get into uh, the lap screen. So this is where I can go and look at the laps themselves, um, and that's going to use the buttons. And this is what's kind of cool about this watch compared to the Polar Watch is that the Polar Watch doesn't have these sort of dedicated buttons uh, for lap. And so the lap button is this bottom one right here. So as soon as I press that, you'll see it resets the lap counter. And then if I go up the top here, I can use the dedicated start and stop button. Uh, so that'll go ahead and immediately pause it, and I can resume it using that same button as well. Last but not least, I've got the music icon up there in the middle, so I can swipe that down, um, and it's telling me music is not available. So, sorry, no music for you. Um, but I can swipe up, and I get to the total distance and the pause and the end screen. So this is a good time to go ahead and end things. Uh, so I go and hit that end icon right there, and uh, the activity says it's not tracked, and the reason is because there's no GPS data. So Strava is depending on that GPS data for this run, so it's not tracking the run. I'm going to do a bit of digging to find out how you would track a treadmill run, because obviously that's sort of a, a problem if you can't do that. Uh, but there are certainly numerous other Android Wear apps out there that can do that, so it's not the end of the world, uh, but it's something I would expect it to be a bit more obvious. Uh, let's see if I go this way into the control panel, run IQ, and if I click that instead, if maybe it gives me an option. Uh, no, it, it doesn't give me an option. So. Um, a bit of a bummer, I can't swipe any other way to get any other options there uh, except for that. So getting back to the control panel here, or the, sorry, the main home page, uh, one last thing is notifications. They appear from the bottom. Um, so you may have noticed right now, or somewhere on the way, it said touch reconnect. Um, one thing that I've seen here with the watch is that every time I start the New Balance app, it kills the Bluetooth smart connection when it loads up the GPS. And so right now it's back to connected, though even though here it says not connected. Um, still, I've shot this demo like four times now because I'm stupid. So anyways, I shot it four times and every single time uh, it does it, it drops the connection, which is sort of a bit of a bummer. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on there and whose fault that is, but it does suck, which I do know. So if I click this icon again right now, Got to wait and boom, we just lost connection just like that uh, every single time. Um, so in any case, I was showing you smart phone notifications, which you can do from the bottom. You can swipe up. So right now I swiped up and I see this one from Patreon. These are just all the standard smart phone notifications that you would get from your device, whether it be iOS or Android coming in there. I can swipe again. I can get weather, for example, and I can see uh, it's a lovely two degrees outside. So that's just a quick overview of the watch itself and kind of the basics on using it. Um, again, from running outside perspective and all that jazz, I'll do a separate video, but I just want to kind of give you a quick preview as part of this unboxing, which is really more the focus than the watch UI and all that stuff. Last but not least, I forgot when I was doing my way in here to talk about size comparisons. Just to compare it briefly to the M600, uh, you can see this here. Obviously, this is square, this is round, so there are going to be differences there. Um, from a thickness standpoint, they're virtually identical. Um, probably a bit tough for you to see, but again, they're almost exactly the same uh, from a thickness standpoint. Uh, it's just really the round versus square side of things. Uh, that makes them kind of different. When it comes to the Apple Watch, of course, is again Series 2 with the GPS, uh, it's not even the same ballpark, which again is fine. There are reasons why you want a bigger watch than a smaller watch, uh, but just keep that in mind. We're, we're talking a massive difference in size here. Uh, in a lot of ways, this is a pretty big watch. Um, there's no doubt about it uh, compared to most GPS with optical heart rate uh, sensor watches on the market today. This is pretty beefy, um, but that's kind of the expected from a company that's getting into the market to begin with. It takes a lot to get the manufacturing prowess up. Uh, it's not something that you typically see on a first generation watch. Okay, so there you go, an unboxing look at the New Balance Run IQ GPS watch. Stay tuned for many more details um, on how it actually works out running. I'll be starting that up with the run here shortly, and I'll kind of go into some of the details and just basic usage and stuff like that. So stay tuned into the channel there. Okay, so there's a look. Okay, there. Okay, so there you go, just a quick unboxing. Okay, so there you go, just an unboxing and size comparison for the New Balance Run IQ and kind of some of the basic features and how it differs from other GPS watches in this same uh, market. And I will consider this market, by the way, be devices that have um, music on it, an optical heart rate, GPS, and then some sort of app platform ideally, which is why in particular I ignored Garmin for this because they have no music on their watches for reasons that make no sense whatsoever. Um, so any case, keep that in mind. Also stay tuned to the channel. You can do that by hitting the doohickey down below there. Uh, there'll be plenty more to come, especially on this watch. I'll go out and do some running in the next few days here with it and kind of show you how that works while I'm out running, show you about pace, how is pace accuracy, how is uh, distance accuracy, how is optical heart rate sensor accuracy, all super important things to dive into, but things that you really have to get outside and run and kind of spend some time with it to understand how well they actually work. With that, thanks for watching. Go ahead and hit that like button down below. Uh, that way it helps out the channel and 
With that, thanks for watching. Go ahead and hit that like button down below. And don't forget that subscribe button as well. That way you stay tuned for all the latest sports technology goodness. Have a good one.